Welcome to iLecture Online and, and furthering our quest and trying to understand Maxwell's equations, we're now going to look at the second of the four Maxwell's equation in integral format. And the equation is this one right here where the surface integral of the magnetic field dotted with the dA with the surface, and of course dA is a small little surface uh, element, so if we integrate the strength of magnetic field and the direction of magnetic field with the surface area of a Gaussian surface, we will always get zero. What does that mean? Well, in order to understand a little bit better, we're going to look at the first equation where we're dealing with the electric field. And let's say that we have a charge right there. Let's say positive charge, electric field emanating away from the charge. And now we place a Gaussian surface around that charge object that has that excess positive charge. And of course, we realize that the electric field will be emanating away from it. So we can then see that electric field will always be perpendicular away from the surface of that charged object, assuming that's a, either a conductor or an object with, uh, with charge uh, completely th throughout the object. Either way, it would, would work just the same. And so if we then multiply the electric field strength in the direction with the surface, we then realize that that surface integral will be equal to all the charge inside the Gaussian sphere divided by epsilon sub naught. Now, what happens if we take our Gaussian surface and we move it over here? We do the same thing. We're going to do a surface integral of the electric field anywhere along the surface of that. Multiply it, of course. You know, if, we, if we do a surface integral, that means we simply multiply the strength of electric field and the direction of the electric field times the area of that surface. In this case, we're also going to get zero because notice there's no charge inside this Gaussian surface. So the answer to this equation now would be that we know we're going to get zero, just like we will in this equation right here. What's the difference between the two? Well, there is absolutely no charge inside. And notice that in this case, the electric field will be into the surface. Here, the electric field will be out of the surface, even though this is farther away than this right here, so the strength of the field there is less than the strength of the field there. When we integrate over the whole surface, since this is in opposite direction, into the surface, out of the surface, that will eventually cancel each other out and the result will be zero. So that again proves that with the Gaussian surface, if there's no charge inside, this integral will be equal to zero. So with the magnetic field, what is the equivalence here? Well, you can say that if I were to place a Gaussian surface right there, so a spherical Gaussian surface, and then I integrate over the surface, so I try to find the B field strength anywhere along that surface, we would expect to get zero just like we did over there because, again, notice that here the magnetic field is into the surface, here the magnetic field is out of the surface, so we would expect that that would cancel out and get zero. So you say, well, there's no difference there. That's true. Now, what would happen if we draw a Gaussian surface around this portion right there? Now you say, aha, there we go. We have a net flux of, of magnetic field going into the surface, nothing coming out, so therefore there should be a net result and it should not be equal to zero. Well, not quite entirely true because what happens is, even though magnetic field emanates from the north pole of the magnet and then enters the south pole of the magnet, the magnetic field will continue throughout the magnet from south back to north internally like this. And so you can then see that if you draw a Gaussian surface over one of the poles, just as much magnetic field strength goes into the south as will leave the south and go back to the north internal to the magnet. And so therefore you still end up with a zero surface integral when you integrate the B field with the surface like that. So what would happen then, and here I drew an example a little bit smaller, what if we then take a Gaussian surface and completely enclose this portion of the magnet and the B field. Of course, the B field continues in an infinite sense. It will continue out further and further out. So you know that some magnetic field lines will go beyond the surface, but just say we'll just enclose the ones that are inside the surface right here, including the magnet. Now say, well, should that be something else than zero? Well, it turns out that if we find the magnetic field strength anywhere along the surface, and of course you can imagine that the field lines will continue on like this and go out and in the surface, so that means you're going to have field lines leaving, entering and leaving the surface, and it looks like my pen is kind of dying. I'll grab a new pen for the next video. Uh, but then what, what you can see then is that here we have the magnetic field leaving the surface, so we 
we multiply the strength at that location times the area. We do that over the entire surface. Here the field goes into the surface. Here it's leaving the surface. Here it goes into the surface. And because of its symmetry here, you can see that the amount going into the surface is exactly equal to the amount going out of the surface, so that all should cancel out. And yes, indeed, you should still get zero. So that's different than the first uh, equation here, where we know that if we encircle a charge, there will always be Q inside, and therefore this integral will not equal zero. It will equal the Q inside of either epsilon, so not. With magnetic fields, that's never the case. And the big reason why they're not the same, the big reason why with, with the magnetic field is always zero, is because you're enclosing a ma magnet that causes the the magnetic field and the magnet will always have a north and a south and the lines will always be continuous throughout so they make complete loops through the magnet and around there's no break there's no emanation of a magnetic field from a point source like there is for a chart and that's why there's the big difference and Maxwell and Gauss understood that and that's why the equations were developed and that's why these are not part of Maxwell's equations where we say in the case of an electric field, if we draw a Gaussian surface around a charged object, then E dot dA, the surface integral of the strength of the field, multiplied times the area of the surface, will always be equal to the Q inside divided by epsilon sub, nor, uh, sub zero. Since on the magnetic side, that cannot happen. There's never a means of encircling anything with a Gaussian surface so that we have a point magnet that only has a north or only has a south where a magnetic field can emanate and not go loop back to since that's not possible with a magnetic field. The similar equation from Gauss's law where we take the strength of magnetic field and multiplying by the surface area, it's basically the surface integral of B dot dA, it will always be zero. And that, if you understand that, then at least you understand half of the two of the four, the first two of Maxwell's equations. And so that's what we mean by Gauss's law for magnetism.